it's not often that a rabbi uses the expression, I am at a loss for words, but I feel that way today. Not only because of the pandemic that we are still grappling with in terms of COVID-19, but also, of course, because of the events of the last week, 10 days, in which we saw and are still seeing such expressions of outbreak, of hatred, and the protest against it, and the hatred that it has fomented on all sides within our riven society. But I'm more at a loss for words because of the passing of Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb at a personal level. I wanted to share with you in advance of Shabbos today some thoughts for your consideration, because with all of the tumult and all of the anxieties and all of the issues, it would be easy, too easy, for us to forget about what this man has meant to us as a community. I speak here broadly about the modern Orthodox, he would have said centrist Orthodox community, and I'll share a couple of personal reflections as well. I do so with no small measure of trepidation because I'm cognizant of the fact that the Medrash Rabbah on our parsha, Parsha Naso, mentions that a Kaddish Baruch Hu told David HaMelech that Shaul, his predecessor, Lo Nisbad Ka'alach, was not properly eulogized. And yet, Hayad David mit Atzel Behespedo, David was tarrying, almost as if he was lazy, to eulogize, to come to eulogize Shaul. Why? She'amar, Shaul kvar avru alav tresar yarche shata lo arche la aspude. Too much time has elapsed since he has passed away, and therefore I can't properly, more than a year after he died, it was actually many years after he had died, it's not appropriate now to deliver a eulogy. So if I'm going to fail, perhaps in the content and in the style, hopefully, since it's still the week of the shiva, of the loss of Rabbi Dr. Norman Lamb, Zichon Alevracha, hopefully at least it's within that time frame that it hasn't been too much hit atzlut, call it not just laziness, but a, a real sense of ambivalence uh, about even trying to rise to the challenge and the task. So I want to share with you a few thoughts today uh, for your consideration, and hopefully I'll include uh, joining this video just a few links to think about. To put it simply, uh, one of my heroes has died. Uh, he had already passed from the public scene years ago, but as we're all wrapped up in these moments, I've been trying to put my finger on what my sadness is about his loss. Let me share with you words from his last letter. It was published in the summer of 2013. I remember where I was when I was sitting reading it. I was at an RCA convention back in the olden days when people got together for conventions and conferences. Let me read you the words that he wrote. He wrote, and finally a prayer for my family, my students, my colleagues, and my friends. Learn from my experiences, both positive and negative, to achieve success with grace and to face failure with dignity, to be prepared for the extreme periods of life's challenges without hubris or despair, and never to stop hoping and expecting better news and better times. Above all, learn the importance of commitment to great and noble ideals even when it hurts and disappoints, but the trust that ultimately will all prove worthwhile. I pray that you will always strive to live morally upstanding and spiritually fulfilling lives, marked by abiding loyalty to the principles of Orthodox Judaism, to Torah Umada, along with respect for all people who honestly follow the dictates of their own beliefs and conscience, even when such do not accord with your own deepest commitments, and to combine your love of God and Torah with love of all humans created in the image of God. The letter continues, but just to pause here for a moment to state the obvious, those words could have been written five minutes ago. And they speak to me on a very personal and deep level, even though they were penned in, as I said, 2013, for our present moment in predicament. To hope and expect better news and better times, and to be able to see a love of all humans created in the image of God. The letter has a concluding section, a concluding paragraph. He would have called it, in terms of a speech, a peroration. It was a peroration not only of the letter or of the speech, but actually, truly, of the man's life. 
he concluded as follows. He wrote, if in any way my life's experience can encourage in you the aspiration to attain a modicum of wisdom, a trust, trust in the faith of our in our ancestors' spiritual strivings from Avram through Moshe, through the giants of the sacred Jewish tradition, a measure of the value of the sweetness and intellectual excitement in the study of Torah, a desire to excel in the practice of mitzvot, the reassurance that ultimately character and godliness are infinitely more ennobling and valuable than any worldly goods or social approbation, and the strength to hold fast and persevere through a life of havdalah, why then my life and yours will have proven worthwhile. Halavai. Now, what did he mean by Havdalah? He explained this in the same letter earlier. He said that one would think that maybe the word Havdalah means just to separate very simply as we read it in the Havdalah prayer at the end of Shabbat each week. But he said, it's not so simple. Actually, Havdalah is much more complex Chazal write, if there's no knowledge, whence the ability to distinguish? And therefore we daven each day, God should give us the ability to have da'at intelligence to separate different variables. But he posed the question, shouldn't a child already know the difference between or and choshech, light and darkness, between whether one is Jewish or not has to do with either lineage or conversion, the distinction between Kodesh and Chol, sacred and profane, is so obvious. The difference between a Sefer Torah and a novel. So why is there a special requirement to daven for da'at, atachon da'at, and to recite the prayer of Havdalah? Here's what he wrote, and it's succinct. I want to read it to you. The answer is that for those who are superficial or who dwell only in one realm, da'at is indeed unnecessary. If we associate only with Kodesh, with holiness, Israel or light and Shabbat, or only with Chol, the profane, the nations, Choshech, darkness, and the weekday, then it's easy to discern distinctions and life is much less confusing. The full atheist, wrote Rabbi Lamb, has few problems. There's little to confuse him. He swallows all of contemporary life and therefore he has no difficulties in trying to tell it apart in its various strands. Similarly, at the other end of the spectrum, the Jew does not step out of his self-imposed boundaries of the sacred, of Israel, of the light of Torah, rejects all that is new and secular and alien in the contemporary culture, and he too has little to confuse him. However, said Rabbi Lamb, or wrote Rabbi Lamb rather, Da'at is needed and Havdalah is vital for those of us who choose to live in both realms, Torah and Mada. Mada meaning not just science, but knowledge generally. And those of us who will reject neither, for those of us who opt both for light and darkness, for Israel and the nations, for Shabbos and the weekdays, for the sacred and the profane. This category describes most of us who are known by the somewhat unfelicitous name, modern orthodox, he put it in quotation marks, who will not succumb to the blandishments of the materialistic and hedonistic and atheistic society and yet refuse the easy comforts of intellectual ghettoization, who believe that the function and the mission of the Jew in the world is to illuminate the Choshech, to sanctify the Chol, to bring the Jewish message to the nations, and to introduce the warmth and meaningfulness of Shabbos to all the days of the week. For us, who are involved in this great mission, that of Torah and that of Mada, was the dictum of the rabbis who said, Im'ein da'at havdala minayin. Without the ability to discern, without intelligence, how will one be able to engage in discernment? It is we who straddle both worlds, who are therefore subject to the danger of confusion and who therefore need the special divine gift of da'at or knowledge, insight, in order to be able to perform havdalah, always to distinguish between the light and the dark, even when we try to illuminate the shadows of life, to know what separates the holy and the profane, even when we try to consecrate the secular. He went on to speak about Yeshiva University, he said this is the point of Yeshiva University. This is what we're striving for. And he said the ideal of the yeshiva, of yeshiva university, to which I personally owe so much a debt of gratitude, is in fact, he wrote, Kiddush HaChol, to sanctify the profane, to illuminate the darkness, to Judaize the general. And it's yeshiva, therefore, he said, that was striving most mightily for that dot to keep a havdalah, to be able at all times to discern, to distinguish, to avoid confusion, 
in a terribly confusing world. We're living in that confusing world, my friends. And the loss of Rabbi Lam, again, though he stepped off of the public stage some years ago, is um, a great one, a legacy that continues to shine. Rabbi Lam spoke the truth with eloquence. He tackled tough ideas. He delivered strong messages, not only in his writing, but especially in his drashot. I was zocha to hear some of those drashot. They made great impact on me. He served in the congregational rabbinate for decades, and then as the president of Yeshiva University. Let me put it more simply, more directly. Rabbi Norman Lamb exerted his signature influence on my life. That's not only because literally his signature adorns my klafa smicha and hangs on my wall at the, my office in shul, and also the klaf smicha of most of my chaver, most of my colleagues in the Orthodox rabbinate today, the members of the Rabbinical Council of America, but also he exerted that signature influence as an Adam Gadol. He led by example. A Tamad Chacham, a master orator, a consummate mensch, a role model, a bright star of Orthodox Judaism, of Jewish leadership, of basic humanity. Ringing in my ears still is the great challenge that he gave us, Numus Machim, in the Chag HaSmicha that I was in. If I recalled correctly, that was when he said it. I'm pretty sure. I know it was in Lantport Auditorium. He said that when we daven on Shabbos, just as we're about to say, Aleinu L'Shabeach, we recite the Pitam HaKtorat, and then we come to the section, quoted from the Gemara Masachat Megillah, Tana Deve Eliyahu, they used to teach in the Academy of Eliyahu, Kol HaShona Halachot B'chol Yom Muftach Lo Ben Olam Haba. Anybody who learns Halachot each and every day, they are assured to be one who has a share in the world to come. And then Rabbi Lam noted, the next thing that we read in the Siddur is a section from the end of Masachet Brachot, which is Amar Rabbi Lazar, Amar Rabbi Chanina, Tamiri Chachami Marim Shalom Ba'olam. Those who are Torah scholars or, let's say, aspirational, uh, those who are students of the sages, the Tamiri Chachamim, they bring more peace into the world. And then it quotes a number of different psukim. Ask Rabbi Lam, if we've just read a moment ago, the Anche Knesset Agdol helped us organize our prayers, a little coda it teaches us, if we learn halacha every day, we will have a share in the world to come. Then why is the next statement a gadik? It's a homiletic passage with all sorts of verses to, marshaled for it. Said Rabbi Lam, that's not correct. It's not a gadik. It's a normative statement. Tamiri chachamim marim shalom ba'olam is not the way it is, but rather an aspiration of what ought to be. Those who aspire to learn from the sages to be their students ought to strive to bring peace into the world. This has become an increasing challenge for us, friends, in the world in which we are living at this very, very fractious moment, very frightening and uncertain moment on so many levels. Leich b'shalom, Rabbi Lam. Tanuach b'shalom, Rabbi Dr. Norman Lam. V'tamod l'goral chalakei tzayamin. May you arise to your destiny at the end of days. Until then, I hope in people quoting your Torah, siftotecha yidavavu bakever, as they say about great Talmud chachamim, that your lips should be moving, as it were, still now, even as your Torah is being quoted, even though you've left the world. I want to wish each and every one of you, each and every one of us, and in fact, I would say we should each think today, tonight rather, and over the course of tomorrow, particularly that we wish the entire world Shabbat Shalom, a world in which we aspire to peace, the Shabbat should bring peace, and that we should, each of us, be doing our own part in our own households, in our own community, both real and virtual and online, to bring more peace into the world and not to create more strife. Shabbat Shalom.